Hey guys, welcome back to the channel where we talk about all things tech. In today's video, I'm going to take you through getting started with the AWS CLI. The first step is to open up Google and search for AWS CLI. And this is the link we want here, aws.amazon.com forward slash CLI. On the right hand side, you've got your installation packages. So download and run the one for your system. It'll look something like this just run through the prompts and go through the defaults because i've already got it on my system it looks slightly different but just run through the defaults and install it once you're done with the installation open up a command prompt or powershell terminal and we can verify that it's installed correctly by typing in aws dash dash version and if we get something back similar to this we know it's installed correctly before we begin using the AWS command line, we first have to authenticate. Now, by far the easiest way to do this is using your IAM role permissions. So what we're going to do is head over to IAM, click on users, select your admin user or the username that you're gonna be accessing the command line with. And in here, we can go to security credentials and go create access key. You can, you can then download those credentials or you can just copy and paste them. What you then want to do is in your terminal window, you want to run AWS configure, chuck in your access key. So this one right here, chuck in your secret access key, uh, Enter in your default region. I'm currently using US East 1, so I'll leave that the same and leave that the same as well. Now we have our credentials saved. Any commands I run in this terminal window will run with the same level of permissions that this particular user has. Something to be aware of, when you set up your credentials this way, it does store it in plain text on your PC. So this is the file path if you're on a Linux or Mac, and this is the file path if you're on a Windows. So on my PC, we can see here, I've got a config and credentials file. And if I open that up in VS Code, here it is here, in plain text, you've got my keys. So while it's super convenient, obviously it's not the most secure. Now in a professional environment, you would use something like single sign-on where you could authenticate using your single sign-on credentials. That would give you a temporary token, which then feeds into this file. And that way the access only lasts for like half a day or a couple of hours, whatever you've configured which is a lot better than long-lived keys. Also, be sure to never share these or check these credentials into any Git repo because if somebody gets a hold of these keys, they've got access to your account. So keep them safe. Quick disclaimer, these are temporary credentials for me. I am using an A Cloud Guru temporary sandbox environment. So once I've finished filming this YouTube tutorial, I'm gonna hit delete sandbox and those credentials are gone and won't work anymore which is why I'm showing you the credentials in plain text because in 20 minutes, I'm gonna completely terminate this environment and you won't be able to access it. So if we head back to the web page where we downloaded the installers, there is a documentation link. And in here, we have a bunch of command references that we can use. This documentation comes super handy because obviously you can't memorize everything. So we're gonna quickly search for EC2 and let's see all the commands that we can do for EC2. In here, there should be like a describe instances yes describe instances this and it gives you like a brief description of what it does it gives you all the different options that you can have and normally it has a couple of examples down the bottom of how to use it something like this so let's go ahead and try it whenever we access the aws cli we always start with aws space followed by the type of resource that we're touching so we want to learn more about EC2. And then after that, we give the exact command that we wanna run. So we're gonna run describe instances. This should give us a list of all of our current instances that we have. In here, it returns an array of instances. I've only got one instance up and running at the moment. And you can see there's a, a ton of details, the EBS volume and everything attached, which is consistent with what we have running currently. When you're first starting out, you're more than likely gonna be more comfortable using the user interface, clicking through the console and kind of learning the different bits and pieces. That is perfectly fine and I highly encourage it. I do, however, suggest that you should at least get some familiarity with the command line tools. I say this because if you plan to do this professionally in your nine to five day job, you will have to touch the command line and get comfortable with it. 
Imagine if you were clicking through the console and I don't know, you wanted to take a backup of the server. Sure, you could click around the console, click about 10 buttons and have it done within a minute. What if you had 100 servers that you wanted to back up all of a sudden? Would you click through and rinse and repeat 100 times? Absolutely not, you would script it. You'd write a bash, Python, Groovy, whatever kind of script, which would call the command line tools and it would execute your commands for you. You know what, let's run through it. Let's start a timer and see how long it takes us to create a snapshot. So we've got our EC2 instance. We will head over to storage. We've got our volume here. Click on that. Click our volume and we'll go create snapshot. Now snapshots are like point in time recoveries that we can use. Uh, just do backup from console and we'll create it. Cool, it is creating our snapshot. And that took us about 30 seconds if you shave a little off for my talking. So there's our snapshot. Now let's see how long it takes us to run it from the command line. Now we'll round it down to five seconds. Refresh the page and there we can see it's creating our second snapshot. Now if you only needed to do this once, obviously going through the console is a lot easier, but if you need to repeat operations over and over and over again, the command line comes in handy. And like I said, if you're going to do this professionally, you are gonna have to get used to using the command line, so I suggest starting early. The command line is also great to know, especially as you start branching out into infrastructure as code. If you start mucking around with CloudFormation or Terraform, it's great to have a working understanding of the APIs and how to interact with the command line. So in this video, we set up the command line tools we set up our authentication and we ran a couple of commands to show you how it all works. I hope that was helpful. If you guys have any questions or you have any topics that you would like me to cover a bit more in depth, leave them in the comment section down below and I'll be sure to make a video on it. Until then, I'll see you in the next one.